Hi, my name is Corey Goss, and in this video, I'll be introducing you to the Waveform window, one of the key debug windows within the SimVision debug solution. Specifically within this video, we'll be covering these items. I'm now going to switch over to the demo. This is the same demo environment we've been using on other videos within the series. I'm going to select, using the design browser, a few different levels of hierarchy. I do that through control selection. And then from there, I say control W, and this will send all of these signals out to the waveform window. So first, let me explain a little bit about the various regions within the waveform window. So on the far left column is the signal name. So this shows us by default only the signal name. If we wanted to see the full hierarchy though, we would simply click on the name column and this allows us to change what we're seeing to show us the full hierarchy of the signal or it can also show us the uh, database name or combination of the database and the path. I'm going to just revert back and show the signal name. Now, when, when the waveform window opens, we have two different cursors. By default, all of the values shown within the value column um, are based on the time A cursor. We could switch that though between the cursor and the baseline if we'd like. Down in the bottom, we can also change the justification of how the values are displayed to be either right or left justified. Now, let's take a look at the main pane that users interact with. Zooming is the first operation that you'll probably want to do within the waveform window. So, to zoom as of the 12.2 release, it's simply left click and drag, and then we can zoom in on any particular region. To zoom out, I would right click and drag, and the farther out I click to the farther out I pull to the right, the farther out the zoom factor will be. If I wanted to zoom full, I would right click and pull to the left. This allows me to zoom out the, to the full time range. Now the next thing I might want to do is to do some navigation around the various signals. So let's zoom in on a particular area of interest to me. And in this case, I'm going to zoom in on, let's say, this area here. Now, if I wanted to check on the transitions that were occurring, uh, or the values that were occurring on any signal, I could easily check the transitions. I'd select the signal. And then using these built-in buttons up here, I can simply just move the cursor right through the change of all of the values on that signal. And you could see the values changing in the value column. Now, this takes me to any transition. Now, I might be only looking for a pause edge or a neg edge on a single bit signal. So let's take, for example, this RX pad I signal. So I'll select the signal. Now I want to look at just pause edges. So there I would say search times and search for only the rising edges. Now, I can go forward or backward in time, only hitting on all of the pause edge transitions. If I want, I can also look at falling edges, and I can go backward or forward in time looking for that. If I wanted to look for a specific value, let's say I go back to this R state signal, I can search for a specific value and say, show me when this signal is equal to a value of 9. And this will take me now to all occurrences of the signal being a value 9. Now, maybe I might want to do something like count the number of transitions that occur on any signal. So to do that, I use my two cursors. I put my baseline in one location by middle mouse clicking, and then I pay, put my time A cursor in another location by left clicking. And as long as I have a signal selected, I then click the count edges button. This button tells me that I have 25 edges on this particular signal during this time frame. If I want to gain information on a single bit signal, then let's say I go back to this RX pad signal, I can click that count edges again, and this shows me a little bit more information. Number of pause edges, neg edges, total edges, as well as the duty cycle based on the current high and low time within this signal. So. Next thing I might want to show you is how to, uh, how to do maybe comparisons between different signals. Let's say we had a couple of signals in the environment that looked like they might be the same, but we wanted to just double check this. So if I zoom in on this area, here we have a WE out signal. 
Here we have a WB acknowledge signal. They kind of look the same, but I'm not quite sure if they are. So I'm going to middle mouse click on this and I'm going to drag it up. And it looks as though they might be the same. One might be shifted from the other. So to do a quick measurement to see how far off they are, I left click on one edge and I middle click on the other edge of the other signal. And the difference is always shown to me up in the top left hand corner here. So I have a difference of negative 10 nanoseconds. So I'm going to shift over this WB AC0 signal. And I do that by right clicking in the cursor value column and I say shift. And I'm going to shift it out by negative 10 nanoseconds. So I'm going to bring this signal in. So I click OK. Now it looks like they're identical, but I'm still quite uh, not quite sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick comparison. So I highlight one signal, and then I do control, highlight the other signal, and now I right click and say create, uh, create comparison. Now what I see happen is during the time frame that I was looking at, they are the same. I don't see any differences, but my comparison sidebar has opened now, which shows me that there are differences throughout the simulation. And if I click on any of these, it'll take me directly to that point in time when there was a miscompare between the two signals. And you can see this group that was added in. This is a comparison between the two signals of a shifted value of WB AC0 and the WE0 signal. Now, one other thing I'd like to show is how to create an expression. And an expression in this case could be based on the ending together of two signals to create, let's say, a gated clock. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I have a next FSM state signal and I have a clock signal. And let's say I want to create a gated clock based on any time that the FSM state is, has a value of 3. I'm going to click on the FSM state signal and I'm going to click on this button up here, which is send this object to the expression calculator. So the expression calculator opens, and it's already pre-populated with the signal I selected. Now I'm going to end this together with another signal. So, but I want to make sure it's only when this value is 3. So I'm going to select the double ampersand down here, and it creates the double and, and it creates a token. So to create this token, I can click on the other signal, say clock, and now I'm going to say select send to expression calculator again and now I have created my expression and I'm going to create a name and this name should be gated clock I'm going to set my cursor to be where I'd like to see it and now I'm going to say send to waveform now I've created a gated clock and notice that the clock is only high when the FSM state is set to 3 now you might ask yourself, what is this little item over here? This item is actually a glitch. And no matter how close I zoom in on this particular signal, I'll never be able to see anything more than a glitch being notified. So how do I know what's causing this glitch? Well, on any edge within the waveform window, it shows as a synchronous change across all of the signals within the design. But really, the simulator is actually has a sequence of operations that it performs on any one of these uh, particular clock edges. So to glimpse into that uh, sequence time, I can right click and I can say expand the time sequence at this time. And now I get a blue range. This range of time is that instant in time expanded out to show us exactly what the simulator is doing. So at this time I can see that the first thing that the simulator does is it changes the clock. Then it changes the gated clock. Then it changes the FSM state. And then finally it changes next FSM state which drops the value of the gated clock. Now because the gated clock is completely within this expanded time sequence uh, we don't actually see that on the waveform window as anything other than a glitch. So I'm going to collapse this time sequence down now the last thing I want to show is how to organize things very quickly in the waveform window. So let's say I wanted to create a specialized group of signals that are based on all of these signals here. So I can click and I can shift click to select the signals of interest and now I say create a group. I give the group a name. I'm going to call it um, 
my special signals. And now I've created a group that I can collapse away or expand at will. I can also do things like select all these signals and change the color. Make them all fuchsia in color for the trace. And also make the color of the name the same. So now when I expand this out I can see that these are all fuchsia in color. Now for the remaining of this, the other groups maybe I can create another default group here by saying create group. And if I wanted to create some more distinct um, separation between these I can also say create a divider. And this puts a solid bar between two different groups um, so that I can easily distinguish these in the uh, in the waveform window. So that's a quick walk through some of the capabilities of the waveform window within the SimVision debug solution. Do check out other videos within the series.